In this video, I'm going to compare the after-tax cost of debt versus equity for a corporation. So, let's use this problem that I created for my class. I've got Kai Lash. He's forming a C corporation called the Daily Bagel, and he's considering two different options of funding the company. Basically, he wants to give $400,000 to the Daily Bagel to fund its operations, and in each option, he's going to give the company $400,000. But in option one, what he's going to do is he's going to give $400,000 cash to the Daily Bagel, and he's just going to get equity. He's going to get 100% of the company's common shares. And then basically he's gonna receive a $50,000 dividend at the end of each year for the next five years. And we're just gonna assume that the company makes $80,000 of profit every year and he's taking out $50,000 dividend. So basically what's happening here in option one, Kyle Ash is giving $400,000 to the corporation and he's extracting $50,000 a year for the next five years. So he's getting 250,000 over the next five years. Option two, is structured a little bit differently, but it's still where he's giving $400,000 to the Daily Bagel, except in option two, he's giving $200,000 in exchange for shares, and then he's, he's loaning $200,000 to the Daily Bagel. So $200,000 is a capital contribution, and then $200,000 is a loan. So the Daily Bagel is still getting $400,000 under option one or option two. It's just the way it's structured. Okay, so this is structured as part loan and, and part capital contribution. Now, the, the way the loan is set up, so the Daily Bagel, they're going to pay interest. So let's say that they're going to pay $10,000 of interest every year at the end of the next five years, so 50000 total of interest. But then they're also going to repay 40000 of the principal at the end of each year for the next five years. And it was a $200,000 loan, five years times 40,000, so that's 200,000, okay? So if you look, this also is similar to option one in that Kailash is gonna be receiving $50,000 a year from the Daily Bagel for each of the next five years, okay? So in each case, up front, Kailash is giving the corporation $400,000 cash, okay, to the corp, but then he's gonna receive for the next five years, he's going to receive fifty thousand dollars, and I'm going to show how you how this how, how this is taxed differently. Now I've got a few assumptions here. I'm going to assume that the dividend tax rate for Kyle Ash is fifteen percent, and that his income tax rate, the the rate he's going to get taxed on the interest income, would be thirty five percent, and that the corporate tax rate that's incurred by the Daily Bagel is twenty one percent. Okay, so th these are the assumptions I'm going to use. We're going to do some calculations. I want to show you the after-tax cash flow, the cash info for Kailash under each option. And then I'm going to show you the after-tax cash outflow for the daily bagel under each option. And then you'll be able to see, okay, which option is, is better and why. So option one was where we basically set it up where the corporation is getting $400,000 as a capital contribution. Kyle Lash is getting a $50,000 dividend uh, for each of the next five years. So in that scenario, remember I said Kyle Lash was being taxed 15% on the dividends, we assume. So then if we take, okay, 50,000 he's getting, but then we've got the tax on the dividends, his after-tax cash inflow is 42,500 if he gets a $50,000 dividend each year for the next five years. Option two was where it was gonna be partial, basically he's, he's gonna have a loan. In it, remember he's gonna put up 200,000 of capital contribution, but then 200,000 as a loan. And then we're assuming he was gonna get $10,000 of interest Okay, he was going to get $10,000 of interest every year plus $40,000 repayment of the loan's principal. So he's still getting, each scenario again, he's getting $50,000 cash that so he's taking out of the corporation. But this is, is repayment of the debt plus interest. Now, he's going to be taxed on that $10,000 of interest that he received. Now, his uh, income tax rate, we assume, was 35%. Okay, so he's he's not going to get to keep all 10,000 of that interest, right? He's going to get $6,500 but he's also gonna get the 40,000 repayment of the principal. And that is not taxed to Kyle Ash, okay? He's not taxed on this. So that's ended up with 46,500 after tax cash inflow for option two, when he structures it part loan, part capital contribution. He's taking the money back out as interest and repayment of the debt. Either way, he's getting $50,000. I, I hope you see that. But he's minimizing his taxes here. Even though he's paying a higher rate He's paying a higher tax rate on the interest that relative to what he's paying on the dividends. He's getting some of the capital back as a repayment of the loan, and it's not that that's not being taxed at all. Now, 
When we think about the cash outflow to the corporation, the daily bagel, we see that under option one, what it was just structured as Kyle Lash gave 400,000 as a capital contribution, and then they have dividends for each of the next five years. They're gonna pay 50,000, okay, the, in terms of what the corporation is paying out. They're gonna pay out 50,000. Th th there is no tax deduction or anything that they get for dividends paid. So there's just after-tax cash outflow is 50,000 is going out the door for the daily bagel. Now, under option two, Remember that interest is tax deductible. So if the corporate tax rate is 21%, so then really it's like, okay, they're paying $10,000 of interest, but they're getting a tax deduction for that, okay? So we've got 10,000 times one minus the tax rate, okay? And then we've got $40,000, that's the repayment of the loan. So we end up with $7,900 is like the after-tax cost of the interest, Okay, and but then also the forty thousand repayment. So we get forty seven thousand nine hundred. Notice something. Under option two, Kailash is getting more money. He's getting forty six five instead of forty two five. So the shareholder is getting more money, and the corporation their after tax cash outflow is lower. Okay, so there's, there's a clear winner in this scenario. We've got an option two. The shareholder is getting the most cash. And the corporation is paying the least cash. So in this scenario, you could see that we're actually, the, by structuring the transaction where you have some debt, uh, is, as well as the equity and not just going 100% equity, uh, is actually the benefit of the corporation and the shareholder in this scenario. Now, one of you might be thinking, well, hey, wait a minute. Wouldn't, wouldn't the government, what if the government comes in and says under option two, oh, okay, well, you're putting up 200000 of a capital contribution and 200,000 of a loan. But you know what? We think as the government, we think, you know what? Actually, this is all this is all just capital uh, capital contribution. We're going to collapse this transaction and just say, you know, there's really not a loan going on here. Even though you structured it as a loan, we're going to say that's all really 400,000 as a capital contribution. Yes, that that's a possibility. And so what we need to do, we need to take a look at the section 385 rules. Okay, the Section 385 rules have different factors that say, okay, what would the government consider in establishing, is this a true debtor and creditor relationship? And I'm going to make another video where we talk about the different factors of the Section 385 rules, and we talk about, okay, would something be likely to be classified as a true debt instrument, or might the government come in and say, no, nah, this is really a capital contribution?